there we go. Uh, today we have Dr. Amin Amiri speaking on his new 16 channel integrated receiver array design that he's now implemented. Uh, and thank you, Alan, for agreeing to give a seminar talk. I'm sure it's going to be a very interesting, practical uh, antenna uh, talk that the group will be interested in hearing. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Matt, for the introduction. Uh, I'll, I'll crack on. Um, so hi, everyone. For those of you outside our group, uh, I'm Amin, and I'm a postdoc researcher here. And uh, my research interests are mainly antennas, RF, hardware for radar or comms applications. Um, in this presentation, I'm going to talk about a multi-channel array system that we use to test some new ideas in phase array signal processing. Um, so as usual, I'll, I'll uh, start with uh, an overview of um, what the problem is and uh, what we're trying to address. Um, and I'm gonna whiz through the development of the uh, array system, uh, show some experimental measurements, and, um, and then finally uh, present some of the um, initial uh, signal processing data that we, we have. Uh, and then I'm gonna wrap up with summary and outlook. Um, so phase array systems have been around for a while and they go through phases of being attracted depending on the hardware limitations and breakthrough. These systems are now a hot, hot, hot topic. Um, so the question is what makes up a phase array system? There, there are essentially many smaller radiating elements working together to achieve the same performance of a larger system. Um, you can have many arrangements for these individual uh, elements, uh, either uh, circular or, or linear. Uh, so on the left diagram, a linear arrangement is shown. Um, and uh, when you play around or vary the phase difference between these, these elements, then you can control the combined radius of power in any direction across the aperture of the uh, array system. Um, so on the left, uh, I've shown a, a, a diagram um, that is, I think, it's drawn by other devices. But nonetheless, um, it, it shows a a system that uh, physical phase shifters are used um, to, to vary the phases. Um, and a common node, um, RF, uh, is either used to transmit or receive. Um, this sort of systems are pretty much using uh, communication where uh, a combined power is needed. Um, so uh, you can imagine satellite technology in uh, gateway uh, industry where they use many elements to, to up the power uh, either for uplink or downlink um, applications. Uh, on the right, uh, it's, a, it's the same sort of system, but uh, here individual elements um, are tapped um, separately. Um, so each uh, channel um, gives out a, a raw data and the uh, the processing or, or the phase or digital processing is done in the PC while, um, while the um, data has been captured. So here it gives you more um, sort of degree of freedom to play around with um, uh, some of the algorithm ideas. Uh, so this, this, this sort of system is probably used in, in, in radars um, where you have more uh, flexibility on the, um, on the captured data. Um, so the applications of these phase array systems are, are immense. Um, they define themselves uh, in, in various um, domain, either comms or radar. Um, you can see on the left here is a system I put together a few years ago. Um, it's a four element array and um, the aim was to create a phase array satellite gateway at KA band. Um, and uh, you can see it's, it's pretty huge, uh, but it, is, you know, it doesn't have to be that, um, that big. They, they go through different um, uh, sizes, depending on what, what you require. So on the right is a uh, sort of a flat panel type uh, phase array system um, at C-band, and uh, it's been used as a, as a radar uh, receiver. So this is the one uh, system I'm gonna talk about in this presentation. Um, so uh, any hardware development is like a, a chicken and egg, really. Uh, you either design a system to perform a task, or you, if you have an idea or an algorithm that you want to test, um, you need a hardware to, 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 um, uh, to get some data. Um, but how do you set the specs? Um, so here we put together a proposal through a project with a client, 
uh, and we decided that um, what what we can what what, what can we achieve um, through some phase array processing in a passive red application um, using a Wi-Fi um, as a limited opportunity. Um, so, as as you know, passive uh, radar. It's, uh, it's a mature technology. It's been around for a while. Um, we've done a lot of work here in, in the group. Um, and usually in that sort of uh, um, system, you need a surveillance channel and a ref ref reference channel. Um, and once you get data through, the, through both systems, you cross it and, and, and you, you put together an image. Um, so one idea here um, that was proposed was to can we do the same without uh, the, the reference uh, channel? Can we create an image without um, relying on the reference channel? And a, a good analogy that I can think of is, is the, the human eyes. Um, we don't have one eye looking at the sun and the other one looking at the target to draw up an image. Um, the, the human brain creates that image um, purely from what is reflected from the target. So um, can we uh, imply uh, digital technology in radar. Um, so that, that's that's the, uh, the idea that we want to, to try. Um, so in, in order to try all these ideas, we need an array, um, a system with multi-channel. Um, so we, we you know we uh, we uh, put some specs together. Um, I think initially we went for eight channels, but we thought, hey, what's the fun in that? Let's uh, let's go with sixteen channels. Um, and um, because we were bound by the Wi-Fi signal, um, we wanted a minimum bandwidth of uh, 25 to 30 megahertz. And this is the oldest standards of Wi-Fi, um, but the new ones are now 100 megahertz. Um, so somewhere in between. Um, and then from that, it sort of reads, reads itself. Uh, so the, the sampling frequency, the accuracy, the resolution, and um, the type of functionality that the ADC can provide. Um, so the architecture of the whole system um, is pretty straightforward. We got some uh, multiple antennas, uh, 16 of them, um, going to a, a board um, that will down convert from uh, Wi-Fi signal, which is in C-band, to a, a smaller frequency, uh, usually called IF, uh, that we can sample easily um, with the uh, readily available uh, ADC solutions uh, in the market. Um, so, uh, in this scenario, the 16 channels will receive uh, what's been transmitted by a Wi-Fi signal, and um, there will be a, a LO um, that will down convert the signal, and whatever the offset is will come out as IF frequency. Uh, and then all these IF frequencies are then sampled and uh, fed into a PC uh, that the signal processing is, um, is performed. Um, so I'll start with the, the, the last bit of the um, uh, hardware first, uh, because that essentially dictates um, how many channels or what the spec of the hardware will be. Um, so we needed a, um, a high resolution and very phase stable um, ADC unit. Uh, because we are uh, playing with phases, a, uh, the phase sensitivity of, this, of these devices have to be uh, very accurate. Um, otherwise, if, if, if there is a uh, phase on imbalance in the system, then it's very hard, it's very hard to keep a track and um, it will mess up the processing. Um, so we, after extensive um, market research, um, we opted for this um, ADC by spectrum. Um, there's some spec uh, on the top, um, but if you're interested in that, you can, you can look up that model number. Um, so once we got the device, we needed to confirm uh, that it's very stable and uh, it's doing what it's uh, supposed to do and um, check all the data that we got against the data sheet. Um, so we're going through some sort of uh, simple uh, testing characterization. Uh, we basically injected a sinusoidal signal, continuous phase signal into a splitter uh, and fed that into two channels. Uh, recorded the data, and then swap the signals around. Uh, so it takes care of any uh, imbalance in the splitter. And then recorded the signal again, and look at the phases, uh, amplitude, and um, all the frequency response that um, you can get from the, from the data. 
Um, so here, uh, first, you, uh, you can see on the plot on the left, uh, the phase difference between two channels. Um, you can't see the second plot because they're very, very um, accurate in phases. So the, the phase difference is very tiny. Um, and once you get the data from two channels, you can, you can phase compensate um, and plot the, uh, the signal uh, that, is, that is in phase, uh, which is the plot on the right-hand side. Um, so in this particular scenario, these, these two channels are very uh, in phase. Um, so uh, very good um, phase um, difference. Um, oops, let's do that. Not that one. That one. Um, yeah. So we um, carried on the um, the testing to look at the phase difference in time. So how the phase difference will, will, will vary uh, once the units are powered on and stayed on for a period of time. Um, so on the left is the phase difference of uh, a, very, a, a combination of channels. Um, the reason why I've chosen uh, channel one and zero and seven and zero. And so if I go back, is um, most uh, multi-channel ADCs, they use uh, one ADC card uh, that has two ADCs on it, and the other channels are uh, created by uh, creating a, a synchronization uh, pipeline across it. Uh, so it's always good to, to uh, test various uh, ports because they are on a different ADCs. Um, so if you're looking at uh, uh, phase characterization, it's always good to look at all the, all the ports from different um, ADC units. Um, so this is a combination of um, uh, ports from the ADC, and you can see uh, on the left is a short time span, and on the right is a longer sampling time or, or uh, longer running time. Um, and yes, you can see the phase difference is, is pretty stable, uh, and there's no sort of uh, funny business going on there, which is uh, which is very good. Um, the next uh, testing characterization is the, it's looking at the um, anti-aliasing filter of the, uh, of, the, of the ADC, because they all um, uh, employ um, uh, some sort of filtering um, to uh, create the IF signal for, for, the, for the ADC in itself. Uh, so we need to know what sort of uh, response does um, uh, that look like. Um, so on the right-hand side is the amplitude uh, anti-aliasing filter response of the ADCs uh, across um, uh, frequencies around 40 megahertz, and that's what the uh, um, ADC specs was uh, rated at. Uh, and you can see it sort of starts um, quite nice uh, on the top uh, and then it gradually rolls off um, towards 40 megahertz. Um, and um, also we, we needed to look at the phase difference or phase imbalance across uh, many frequencies uh, because the IF band uh, will be quite wide bandwidth after 40 megahertz. So we need to know what the uh, phase difference is across uh, frequency as well. So that's the plot on the left, and uh, it shows the phase difference across frequency is, uh, again, very tiny, uh, which is, again, very good. Uh, so to, uh, if I just go back to the system architecture, to get IO frequency, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get onto the RF convertible, but uh, basically to uh, down convert the um, a RF signal to the IF signal, uh, you need an LO, um, and this LO needs to be uh, offset by a certain frequency, so then when it gets mixed, the IF uh, frequency will come out. Um, to speed up the development um, time, uh, I opted in for one of these um, readily available um, LO modules that you can get on the market. Um, and I was also intrigued to see what sort of uh, performance uh, you get from these modules. Uh, anyway, so you, you can see this, this particular module that is based there on the LMX2594 Texas Instrument chip, uh, PLL chip. Um, and and um, you can see the response that you get from it. So a single tone generated at 4.8 gigahertz. Uh, you can see it's um, quite uh, clean with an reasonable uh, bandwidth. Uh, it, there's a good SNR and the phase noise is not too bad. Um, for what we, we're trying to do here, uh, the phase noise is, is okay. Um, so that is another sort of characterization that we need to do um, before we put all this system together. Uh, onto the array itself, um, the antenna array uh, is compromised of 16 elements plus one channel to um, provide a, a direct uh, signal monitoring um, if, you, if you wanted to sort of uh, perform any sanity checks. Um, in terms of uh, array itself, um, there are 
parasitic elements employed into the antenna array to keep the radiation pattern nice and symmetrical. Uh, the antenna array is fed by, um, by Ballon, um, and the ratio uh, is 2 to 1, um, so 100 ohms. And the spacing of the elements, which is um, quite important in many design arrays, uh, because that effectively um, dictates a couple of things, uh, your uh, radiation pattern, your grating lobes, and uh, your scanning angle. Um, so we went for the a, a default spacing that uh, you would find um, in an array system, which is half a lambda, um, based on your uh, center frequency. Um, yeah, so you can see the, the design, the antenna was simulated in um, uh, a CST microwave um, studio. Um, and the whole thing is simulated as a package. So the, uh, the antenna, um, the coaxial lines um, that you can see here, uh, the, the balance that was uh, selected. Uh, so everything is, is, is important to CSC. So once, uh, once it's simulated, you get a, a near uh, to sort of near realistic uh, response um, as you can get. Um, the radiation pattern of the uh, array uh, or, or a single element is shown there. Um, so we were after quite a wide uh, scanning angle uh, because we want to sort of have a, a wide coverage uh, of, 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 the, of the scene that we try to, to, to look at. Um, and here is the radiation pattern at different frequencies for a single element. Um, and uh, you can sort of devise what the radiation pattern of the antenna array will be. Uh, so antenna array radiation pattern is, is usually the radiation pattern of, of a single element times by the array factor. Uh, so it'll be, a, be, a, be a, a bit slightly smaller uh, than what is uh, here. Um, and the other uh, thing to look at for when you design antennas for arrays is to make sure the radiation pattern is is across uh, is same across all channels. So um, otherwise, uh, you're not going to uh, have a, a, a symmetrical um, uh, coverage of, of the scene. Um, so here on the top, uh, the radiation pattern across all channels is, is plotted and at 4.8 gigahertz and the, on the bottom is the 5.2 gigahertz. So you can see it's pretty, pretty state, it's pretty constant across all channels, um, uh, which, is, which is good in um, uh, getting a, a symmetrical response uh, from the scene. Uh, so here's the antenna put together and tested. Um, so all the, um, so, yeah, you can see on the uh, bottom right hand side, how the spacing between the two boards is implemented. Uh, all the coaxial line and all the uh, SMA um, IF outputs um, and real SM1 measurements. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's quite wide band. So uh, the return, you can see the return loss uh, of the antenna array at the bottom. Um, and it, it sort of performs from four to six gigahertz, um, but it is optimized a bit more uh, in five to six gigahertz region, which is the uh, main Wi Fi frequency. Um, and the receive converted array. Um, so this is the board that sits behind the antenna um, um, to make it integrated. Uh, it's based on a very straightforward uh, superhead uh, receiver design. Um, so the signal comes in, uh, gets conditioned, amplified, filtered, and mixes with the um, uh, LO and the IF is generated. So it's very straightforward. Uh, nothing fancy here. Um, things that are sort of had to be careful design where uh, the LO distribution network. Um, so you've got 16 channels to feed. Um, so you gotta make sure these LO signals um, are carefully laid out. There's no coupling, cross coupling or uh, interference uh, onto these lines. Um, and also the, because it's 16 channels, they, when you lay them out, it's, it's going to be a long, um, a quite a large board. So you have to make sure the LO power uh, that uh, starts from one end of the board, um, uh, reaches um, to the end of the board and, and feeds the mixes at the right level. Um, so that's that sort of um, uh, thing that's to be carefully designed. The other thing that um, was quite um, new to me was to put together a, a, a biasing circuit um, to feed the uh, power amplifier. So the ELO here um, generates a 500 gigahertz and, and it has to go through a, a hefty power amplifier to create uh, enough power so when it gets split uh, each mixer um, uh, gets this um, uh, power that is required uh, and these power amplifiers they are 
are, they're, they're very uh, they're, they're different kinds of power plants. And this particular one is, uh, is based on a PM uh, power amplifier technology. And they require various voltages for them to operate. And they like to be uh, fed these voltages in, in a sequence. Um, so if you wanted to um, sort of uh, make sure you don't blow them up, you have to feed these voltages carefully. Um, so this, this particular circuit um, um, we put together to, to make sure these voltages are fed um, in, uh, in a nice and calm manner um, to make sure the PA stays nice and safe. Um, so that's the, uh, so we, we, we got some measurement results here. Uh, so out of board uh, on the bottom right hand side, it's been tested and calibrated uh, carefully. Uh, each individual channel um, is just been tested. Um, so you can see on the uh, bottom left hand side, uh, IF signal uh, of, uh, sort of um, uh, 80 megahertz coming out. Um, uh, so it's nice and clean, uh, the SNR is good, and uh, the middle plot uh, shows this uh, swept uh, signal across the, the band that we're interested in, so about 40 to 50 megahertz. Um, so that's, that's uh, a nice and flat, um, which, is, uh, which, is, which is good. Uh, so that's the whole thing together. Uh, so basically, uh, there's a lot of mechanical and system assembly involved, uh, cable assembly and all that. And the whole thing is um, uh, powered up by uh, from the mains. Um, so we had a um, so put together a sort of a, a, a safe uh, mains DC uh, converter box uh, that will feed the whole all uh, system. Um, so um, yeah, so that's that's the that's the sixteen channel uh, receiver here um, on the on the, in the middle of the picture. There, that's, that's the ADC. Uh, that's the power supply. Um, and the data is transferred uh, from the ADC to the PC by the Ethernet uh, cable. Uh, and all the processing is done uh, on the PC in real time. So just gonna go through a few uh, data uh, measurements that we got from the, from the system. Uh, it's a still work in progress. As I said, uh, we put together a system, this system to create a test bit to, to um, uh, uh, to, to perform all these ideas. Um, so one idea here that I've shown as a summary of the processing that we're trying to employ here. Um, so uh, capture all the data from the, uh, the elements across the aperture, then perform some phase and amplitude uh, calibration. And then once you get the raw data, form an X and Y uh, matrix. Um, and um, from that, uh, you can create uh, an image um, that will uh, scan across the uh, aperture of the array. Um, so this is this is a, a form of a special processing. Um, I believe there will be a presentation soon on this, um, either from myself or my colleague. Um, so if you're interested in this sort of processing, then yes, then stand by. Um, so this this is an image that you will receive uh, when you get a data. So here in this scenario, um, we're performing a source calibration. Uh, so this is just to figure out what the phase difference across the aperture is to begin with, and then take that out from the um, captured data. Uh, so we, we place this the source in front of the aperture, 90 degrees in bore site, uh, and record the data at different frequencies, and work out what the uh, physical um, phase error is um, depending on the, uh, the position of the elements across the array. Uh, take that out from in the processing and, um, uh, and make sure that calibration is performed every time the data has been recorded. Um, so on the top is the source uh, being looked at uh, 90 degrees or zero degrees, depending how you look at it. And once that uh, source moves around, so in this scenario here, the most the source has been moved by 20 to 30 degrees um, to the right. Um, then you can see the array uh, picking that up um, in, a, in a nice and clear um, plot there. Uh, and all of this uh, processing is, is performed in, in real time. Um, and it's uh, based on LabVIEW platform, um, which uh, is uh, installed in a, in a PC, um, in a desktop PC. Uh, but it's not power hungry. So this uh, will just now um, try to perform the same processing on a, on a laptop. Uh, and trying to sort of walk our way and see where how we can reduce the um, the processor. Um, you know, can we uh, essentially put this all this processing on a, on a tablet, for example? So that's 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 a work in progress. Um, so 
the next step of the video starts, I hope. Uh, yeah, so this, this is the video that shows what sort of processing can be achieved. So here are my colleagues uh, in the chamber uh, walking around and on the left in real time, you can see that the Michael has been detected uh, and picked and, and this, this scanning uh, it, it's basically picking up um, as, as my colleague moves around. Um, so this, this is the, um, uh, the, the, the blue plot uh, shows the, uh, the scanning of the, of the target and on the right we're trying uh, another algorithm where it will detect where the target is going to and where the target is coming from. Um, so it's sort of leading and uh, trailing sort of um, um, scanning. Angles. Um, yeah, so that's um, that's basically what what what, what you can achieve from um, um, multi-channel array systems. Um, and um, uh, yeah, in, uh, so with that, I'll um, wrap up with some summary on Outlook. Um, so a fully integrated system channel uh, in C band has been designed and fabricated. This this sort of system uh, is applicable and can be scaled to other other frequencies. Um, and um, really, it, it, it sort of uh, provides a test bed um, to try all these algorithms and, and, and similar processing um, that uh, makes it, makes phase array system uh, interesting. Um, yeah, so we, what we're trying to do now is to optimize the system a bit more so we can employ into um, outdoor environments um, and introduce uh, multi targets in there uh, to see how many targets we can, we can detect at once. Um, so yeah, so it's it's, uh, it's basically a, a, a work in progress, um, and that's it uh, pretty much for me. Um, yeah, thank you for uh, presenting.